and at first I called him Johnny Come Lately, arriving as he did so late for the party. He was North Star Angel's 10th pup in the 10th generation of a line developed for children with autism. And he was born breech, with a cleft in his palate and no protective cowl. And so I jostled him to life with a kiss and a warm towel, while Angel offered him a stiff tongue bath by way of baptism. And then we secured him a spot way at the back, where Angel kept her richest milk. And I cradled him then for his first nursing, with so many others to come. At first, hard to convince the other puppies of their brother's plight, and of the fact that they would need to learn to share the wealth. But gradually they began to understand, and they grew very gentle with Johnny. You were only waiting for this moment to arise. And then came the morning where Johnny was the first to greet me, skittering like a crazy spider monkey while his siblings lumbered like baby seals. And I realized there was nothing tardy about him anymore. And I began to call him Tiny. But Tiny still had a problem, because he was, well, tiny. And he needed some help to join in with his siblings to play their reindeer games. Luckily, we were already on it, with our early intervention program already well underway. And Tiny was met halfway by his brothers and sisters, who ended up understanding perfectly our language of love. In the months since Angel's pups were born, they have certainly enjoyed their time together, as well as with me. But they grew increasingly restless to learn about the world outside our front door. And so we began placing the pups into the homes of their children early, believing as we do in relationship-based kid canine partnerships. Today we were in South Carolina with Brother Mac when we hit a bit of turbulence right before a baggage claim. But we cleaned up quick. We had to. We were on a mission. And if you think this journey was just about Mac and Jackson and I, I invite you to please think again. Are you crying? You know what he says? He's crying. Yeah, well, this is a happy We met some complete strangers in baggage claim who enlisted for service right there on the spot. There was an older brother and sister waiting on the home front with their kind dad, and they had all already signed up. And with our pups as role models, we try to comfort, to encourage, to cuddle up on cue, and to help typically developing people overcome their fear of differences. came together to unite in defense of Jackson's right to grow up unbullied and free to be who he is without our judgments. Two weeks later, we flew to Michigan to bring Mac's brother to a different boy who faced a different challenge. Cameron was born on the autism spectrum. And like Jackson, he was now facing his share of struggles while growing up. Look, we've got some nice toys, that's a nice duck. Yay. Like Jackson's mom, Cameron's mom told me sad tales of the bullying Cameron has endured. 
Let's give him a little bit of time just to get used to you. When he does this, this is a big compliment to you because when pups show you their belly, they're saying, I trust you. Right? Yeah, and he loves his toy. And by the way, about Mac's little mishap at baggage claim, this may just come with the territory when traveling with a young North Star pup, but you will never catch them making the mistake of walking right by a crying baby. Compassion should remain the cornerstone of our society, even and especially in these troubled times. If there's one thing I've learned in my time at North Star's Helm, it's that wherever you live, in the North, the South, on a farm, in the suburbs, or on a crowded city block, and no matter which side of the partisan divide you call home, we all love our children. We should find our way back together on this dawning of 2020, from a place we all agree is sacred, the place we stand when we love our children. Yours, mine, and ours. <laughs>